Welcome back. This video is the best of Capcom and where possible the best arcade conversion. Now I need you to all be grown up about this and not behave like a child. There's no exact science here, it's just powered by nostalgia. Now if you do happen to like this video, please give me a thumbs up, share and if you're feeling generous, hit that heart to send us a big thanks. This is 1941 Counter Attack, released in 1990. It's the prequel to 1942 and it's a one or two player game. And as you can see on the top right hand corner, the super graphics version, although a little bit short, is a thing of beauty. But sadly, the super graphics is the only port. Now this is a fantastic game from Capcom. And, but don't quote me on this, 1943 is Capcom's first ever game for a console. It was also one of my favourite games for the Amstrad CPC. And by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've played a bad conversion. Although I have heard a few negative whispers about the Game Boy. Loved it in the arcade. Absolutely mad for it. Loved it on the ZX Spectrum as well. Hated, detested it on the Amstrad CPC. Yes, I know, strong words. But it was the Commodore 64 version where I felt it found its true place in the home. And as you can see in the bottom right, it's one of the best arcade conversions for the Commodore 64. Yes, Black Tiger is punishingly difficult. Yes, the home ports barely resemble the arcade original. Or so I thought until I played the Atari ST version. It's a bit juddery in the scrolling department. But for 1990, this is an excellent arcade conversion. And the Commodore Amiga is an exact copy. One of my favourite games from Capcom in the arcade and I loved the ZX Spectrum version as well so I had to put it in. Some people like the Commodore Amiga conversion but it's missing level 2 of the arcade original. On that hardware for me that's unforgivable. I've also put the NES version in there as well because I remember as a kid having lots of fun with that. Now this one's a proper blast from the past. I've put the SNES version to the right hand side because outside of the PlayStation it's the only arcade conversion. Sadly they massively dumbed it down on the censorship and on the SNES it received a mixed bag of reviews but me personally in my humble opinion I like it and it makes the list. Now apparently Carrier Airwing is the spiritual successor to U1 Squadron, more on that later. For the life of me I can't find any arcade conversions, so this looks like it only came out in the arcades. It's almost the same game, you choose from one of three jet fighters, but essentially it's just more of the same great stuff, and there's more than one ending. Now I grew up on this from the arcade and the Amstrad CPC arcade conversion. The 16-bit Amiga version, as far as I'm concerned, was really good as well. Naturally, nothing beats the arcade original, but these games captured the spirit. I also seem to remember having fun with the Commodore 64 version and later the ZX Spectrum. It's a massive classic and a massive conversion. Now this is the sequel to Tower of Doom. I think why it stands out for me and for lots of people is that it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up with role-play elements. It loosely follows the Dungeons and Dragons rules. There's branching paths and a variety of endings. There's a great sense of you can't do this on your own, you need teamwork. Mad for it. If you haven't worked it out already from previous videos, I personally can't get enough of side-scrolling beat-em-ups and shoot-em-ups. If you didn't know, this is based on an animated series and the obvious, it looks exactly the same as Final Fight. Albeit one difference being you drive a Cadillac and have to mow people down. If you like the comic books, you'll love this. For everyone else, it's probably a bit niche. Now, I had this originally on the Amstrad CPC before seeing the or playing the arcade original. To be honest, it wasn't that good. I played the Atari ST version and that was infinitely better. I then experienced the arcade and loved it. I was actually gutted that they never released this on the Sega Mega Drive or Super Nintendo. I, I rate it that highly. 
If you don't like Final Fight, you're dead from the neck up as far as I'm concerned. I loved Final Fight on the Mega CD, and despite some negativity, I really enjoyed uh, Final Fight on the Super Nintendo as well. US Gold brought it out on the 8-bits, on the Amstrad, 64 and ZX Spectrum. They really shouldn't have. There was also Final Fight 1 on the Game Boy Advance, and that was brilliant. Another absolute Stonewall classic. I don't think I've played a bad arcade conversion of this. I had it originally on the Amstrad CPC. I think it was missing one of the levels, but I was still mad for it. The Master System and Sega Mega Drive version were tops for me though, but it was the arcade original that was something else. To conclude, it was like sidearms on steroids. Has there ever been a greater challenge? The 8-bit conversions from memory were superlative, and the 16-bit arcade conversions on the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo, as far as I'm concerned, were just as good, if not better. And today, if I feel like I'm up for a challenge, this is the first game I reach for. Strangely, this is the order I played uh, Ghost and Goblins in. And as with the second game, I absolutely loved it. I couldn't get enough. Capcom knew how to make a game. And I love the 8-bit original arcade conversions from Elite for the Amstrad CPC and C64. You know, I look back and I feel these times were magical and we'll never have them again. Speaking of magical, Knights of the Round. Special mention really has to go to the arcade conversion on the Super Nintendo. It is awesome. You can play as Lancelot, Percival, and of course, King Arthur. Pull the sword from the stone, find the Holy Grail, and save the kingdom. No nightclub has ever seen this much action. The King of Dragons might not have the gritty urban streets of Final Fight, but overall, I had some great times with this game. This is a massive game with lots of end of level bosses. In fact, it's one of the biggest games I think I've ever played, and the two player element really puts things up a notch. On the Super Nintendo, there's some slowdown, but only whilst playing two player, but it's still a great bash. I had this on the Sega Mega Drive back in the day. I uh, didn't play the arcade version until later on. I also played it on the Amstrad CPC and the Commodore Amiga. The Commodore Amiga being on the bottom right, the Sega Mega Drive towards the left, and the Sega Master System, which is surprisingly good at the top right. It's a fabulous game. Magic Sword. So, computer and video games back in November 1990 gave this 87% and they said, although Magic Sword offers very little in the way of new and original ideas, it's slick, colourful and well executed and should appeal to any slash em up fan. And the good news is the Super Nintendo version was really good as well. This is not just a fantastic arcade game, it's also a fantastic arcade conversion on the Commodore Amiga. Apparently there's a Sega Mega Drive arcade conversion as well, and that's equally spiffing. But for me, outside of the arcade original, you can't go wrong with the Commodore Amiga 500 arcade conversion. And I hear that the Atari ST arcade conversion is equally as good as well. If you love the comic books, then you'll love the Punisher Arcade Original or Sega Mega Drive. It's very similar to Final Fight, so unless you like that type of game, this might not tickle your fancy. If, like me, the vigilante in you is very much still wide awake, this is the video game for you. Although I massively prefer the Arcade Original, the home version is just not as brutal. Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior is not only the greatest 2D fighter, it's also the game where Capcom could have just packed up, gone home and basked in the moment of glory. They literally achieved everything. The game still goes and lives today, but it's the original that remains supreme. The Sega Mega Drive version is great as well, but there's no place like SNES. This is fantastic. I, I think it's better than WWF. The Sega Mega Drive arcade conversion is absolutely brilliant as well, but it's the Super Nintendo, outside of the arcade of course, that clinches it for me. And I think it was Nintendo Magazine 
in July 1994 that gave it 91% and said that it was the best wrestling game money can buy. Now I can't be 100% sure, but I think this was the first ever Sega Mega Drive game that I purchased. And for me at the time, it felt arcade perfect. It was a real step up from the home computer 8-bit and 16-bit arcade conversions until I realized there was a sharp 68,000 version, which was superlative. I'm not sure where I first played UN Squadron, but wherever it was, I fell in love from that moment forward. Naturally, back in the day, I couldn't afford a full standing arcade unit in my bedroom. So I had the US Gold arcade conversion for the Amstrad CPC. And although it's slow, I absolutely loved it. But it was the snares that really brought it home. Can you believe that Volgus came out in 1984 and it was Capcom's first arcade video game? Don't get me wrong, there were coin-ups before that, but here I'm talking video games. And it's not the greatest game ever. It's certainly no fine first outing from Capcom, but it makes the list because of what it stands for and the difficulty is absolutely brutal. Based loosely on the cult classic 1988 movie, there's over six levels with a boss fight at the end of each stage. Computer and video games in August 1989 awarded it 85% and they went on to say, I thoroughly enjoyed Willow even though I didn't come within a sniffing distance of a baby. It's a very playable game and is definitely worth a few 10 pence pieces. Now in my humble opinion, this is mindless violence at its best from Capcom probably Capcom's best ever game. And that brings us to the end. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and maybe give a thank you. Let me know if I've missed any of your favorites. And if this one goes down well, I'll make a part two. Bye.